I think what an artist does is all about his, what's around him, what's uh, uh, his environment, cultural, physical, visual. Wandering through the countryside in California's Sonoma County, he appears every bit the outdoorsman. I used to think I was uh, a really a landscape artist, and uh, I think I've revised that a little bit. He is, in fact, a recent arrival from the big city, who has come to this land of color and quiet to paint, to paint the quiet, colorful works that have made him famous. He is Richard Diebenkorn, a master of contemporary American art. I think it's hard for an artist to see to see himself really. I, I'm I'm aware of a, of a predisposition to kind of spareness or, or aloneness is something I value. Where would you like to be right now? <laughs> His sense of aloneness extends well beyond the canvas. In an age of publicity-hungry artists, Richard Diebenkorn has always felt uncomfortable in the spotlight. Your paintings look beautiful. Thanks very much. It's really a pleasure to see them. I came down. The solitude of the studio suits him well. For years, his working procedure has been the same to sit and contemplate a canvas, sometimes for hours, before ever picking up a brush. Usually pieces have to go through several sessions. I, I, uh, I never seem to be able to get anything uh, one shot right off. Sometimes I get sort of rooted to the, to the chair, and, uh, and then, then sometimes it, I think, well, uh, uh, you know, I just can't sit here. I've got to do something. So then I'll uh, be really rather arbitrary. Is that really the feeling? Do you feel like you're wasting time or? Uh... Sometimes, yeah. yeah. Really? Time's going by. I'm, uh... How would you describe it in its current state? Finished? Yeah, I think possibly almost finished. But, but uh, uh, those are kind of, those are famous last words, almost finished, and I've, I've said that about pieces and found myself still working on them a year later. His work, nearly 50 years of it, includes early abstract paintings, a period during the 50s and 60s when he turned to landscape, to still life the human figure. And in the last 25 years, the series of serene geometric abstracts that sealed his reputation, the Ocean Park series, named for the area in Santa Monica in Southern California, where his studio was. It was a place that inspired many of his greatest works, but the pressures of the Los Angeles area began to intrude too much on this most solitary of men. In the last year, I felt that each time I went out in the, in the car to uh, West Los Angeles for errands or whatever, every trip I made, it was that much worse. I felt that it was, I was more hemmed in, more closed in on, the traffic was heavier, that shows you something about how high the water was, but I... I and so it was uh, that Diebenkorn came to the water. Russian River of Northern California, where his dogs, Amy and Lucy, can run free, and where the river itself attracts him again and again. Do you ever, seeing a scene like this, say, all right, now I'm just going to go back to uh, representational painting one time just to get this... Oh, sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, here. I, 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 I just thought I was down here with uh, Amy um, several days ago, and I thought, well, next time I come down, I'll bring sketch pad, and I'm going to uh, draw that. Did you do it? And I haven't done it yet, but <laughs> I'm going to. I guess in the 50s, when I was doing abstract painting, I, I 
I thought, well, to do representational stuff was just beyond the pale when, when uh, mm -hmm. uh, an artist with any seriousness or sensibility uh, simply didn't do that. You know, it was, so it was a sort of mindset that for a set of reasons one uh, had. Yeah. And uh, now we, uh, I and most artists don't have that mindset. So that if, uh, if you see something uh, out there that turns you on, well, it's, well, it's subject, uh, it's subject. <laughs> One measure of Diebenkorn's standing in the art world, this current display of his drawings at the Museum of Modern Art in New York. Another, the recent sale of a Diebenkorn painting for $1.2 million, which puts him in a very select club of living American artists whose works command such prices. His friend, and this exhibit's curator, John Elderfield. For me, he's um, a very important artist. He manages both to be pioneering and to remind one in his work of you know the great masters of the past and to reinvent their message for uh, new generations a sort of uh, reimagining of Matisse of Cezanne of even earlier artists who he admires very deeply it gets a bit more chaotic than this. but after all the analysis Richard Diebenkorn marvels just like the rest of us at the mystery of how art comes to be created. Each of his works a roadmap of its own making with changes and second thoughts right there on the canvas for anyone to see. There's a trial and error and a, and a butting one's head against the wall. And I might say uh, it's all right except for, for one little, little corner and, and uh, so I change that little corner and then that alters other parts and pretty soon I'm back into it and then maybe it changes completely. The aim is not what we might call finish in a conventional way because some of the works look unfinished but rather having fought that fight to his satisfaction and when he feels somehow that he's worked that out then he can leave it alone. <laughs> 